You can tell chat we finished Invincible. Yeah, we finished the first season of Invincible, um, the show, and I've also finished the entire fucking comic, which ran from 2002 to, um, uh, to 2018, I think. So it was an incredibly long-running endeavor. The comic is really, really good. Yeah, the comic is super, super good. Yeah. I do want to see Invincible sometime. Yeah, you should. Rate the Invincible comic ending from 1 to 10 without spoiling it for others. The comic ending. Um, I'd say it was a solid 7.5. There were a couple of underlying problems that never really got addressed. One of the things... So, I feel like... I feel like... Um, I feel like all... Um, superhero stories that are really introspective about what superheroes are and what they should be... I feel like all of them need to end with a fundamental deconstruction of power, you know? And that's what I'm always looking for. Because at the end of the day, the world cannot be fair as long as some people have obscene, like, world-shattering amounts of strength and other people don't. It's like a completely... Huh? Oh, hold on, I just got... Anyway, the, um... Is the show or the comic better? Well, the show's only covered like one tenth of the comic's length, so it's kind of hard to say. I mean, they both have their appeal. I think that the the show actually changed some stuff for the better with regards to the portion of the comic that it went over. Anyway, anyway, like the thing is, like, how do I say this? Any superhero story is ultimately gonna have a pretty fucked premise, right? Because superhero stories never focus on the regular people, ever, in those stories. Because to live as a regular person is incredibly disempowering in a world with superheroes. Right now, in the real world, if you have a firearm, which America, legally, you can have, you're about as strong as an individual human can be. You have a firearm. It's, humans are weak. You've, you've got a gun, you know? Whatever. The boys? Um, yeah, the boys do. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Let me, let me amend my statement a little bit, okay? The Boys does a really, really good job of making it like, if you're a regular human, you're fucked in this world, okay? It's cool if you're one of the good superheroes, but imagine you live in like a Superman comic. How emasculating, how cucked, how beta is it? Like, anytime some big bad shit happens, you just have to wait on Superman to go, like, save you. That's super fucked. That's why I'm always really, really, really sympathetic to, um, to superhero stories where the government does some shady shit to manufacture their own superheroes. Normally, I'd be, like, super not on board with that, but when the alternative is letting a bunch of, like, renegades and vigilantes with the power to, like, blow up the moon uh, b dictate the global power balance, at that point, like, I feel like it's the only thing humanity can really do. Um, it's also one of the reasons why I really, really, really liked... Okay, wait. It's one of the reasons that I really, really, really like um, the Justice League Unlimited Season 1 story arc. The Justice League Unlimited is like, what if all of Earth's heroes lived in a gigantic fucking orbital laser cannon watchtower above the Earth, and everyone was really nervous about them because of every point that I just described. And this was a WB cartoon, too. I mean, it looked like the old Superman and Batman cartoons. Um, look at this. Like, this is, I mean, it's for kids, you know? Or I guess all ages, or however you want to do it. But this is what it looks like. It's not some, like, edgy, you know, adult swim interpretation of heroism it's superman and batman and they're all drawn in the you know it's like the kids you know but anyway um the first season of justice league unlimited is all about superman and the rest of the justice league growing increasingly deranged as they try to like hunt down lex luther who's running for president and lex luther along with like government black ops agents are trying to create their own like anti-superhuman responses and at first superman is considered the good guy but then um green arrow where is he he's somewhere here is he not here? Weird. Green Arrow, who's a human and also basically a socialist, um, is like, hey, yo, Superman, you're, like, kind of fucked up. You need to st you need to chill, okay? Um, all right? You, you're being really cringe right now. Can you really blame regular humans for trying to defend themselves against you, you know? I don't know. It's good. Good stuff. Yeah, Red Arrow. Yeah, exactly. Good stuff. Good, good, good stuff. Um, he literally says, I'm an old lefty in the show. Yeah, yeah, he does, yeah. Isn't he the black guy in the front? I think you're referring to the Green Lantern. Okay. Are we, just because he's green. Okay. Isn't Green Arrow a billionaire? Yeah, he's isn't he's like a billionaire. Didn't he like inherit it or something? I think he's always like trying to ignore the billionaire thing. Well, he's always being like philanthropic with it. Yeah. Um 
Yeah, he's he's their George Soros, exactly. Yeah, he's a class traitor, is what he is. He inherited it, he doesn't care, he burns the money all the time on humanitarian causes, and then he runs around shooting arrows at bad guys. Okay, he's good. He's like good Batman. Also, he has a pointy goatee, which is about as good as you get. I mean, if you're going to have a goatee, you might as well make it pointy. I don't know why you would... I don't know why you wouldn't make it pointy. 